always good to be in the house of the Lord, and truly our God is the greatest. Amen. We want to say welcome to all of you, to our church family. It's always good to see each and every one of you in worship service. We certainly want to welcome those of you who are joining us through Facebook Live. We certainly thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will come back and join us. We actually invite you to come into our worship service. We are here each Sunday morning, starting at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. And we also have Sunday school via Zoom. So please join that, either one of those classes. And then we commence our morning worship in the building each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And then again, we are Facebook Live, but we invite you to come in. We're social distancing. We're wearing our masks, and we're temperature checking. So we are doing our little part. And we know that our God will take care of the rest, as he always does. Amen. And this is the first Sunday in the month of September. And at King Solomon, we like to celebrate birthdays. So we want, yeah. So we want to say happy birthday, happy belated birthday to those of you who have already celebrated a birthday. And then happy birthday to those of you who are celebrating either today or the remainder of this month. May God bless you on your special day. And may he allow you to see many, many, many more. announcements for this morning. The North Little Rock City Mission will meet at Eastern Star Baptist Church on Monday the 13th at 12 noon. Please come and go with us. Thank you, Sister Rosemary Harris and Sister Wilma Stewart. Those are our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. We pray that each and every one of you will have a blessed week and if God says the same, we'll see you next Sunday. Amen. We do have one additional announcement. Amen. We do want you to know that how many of y'all realize that since the pandemic began that uh, King Solomon as a church, we've been reaching out uh, to the community. Amen. We've reached out uh, with food uh, on numerous, numerous occasions to those that uh, have suffered job loss and economic uh, stress through over the last 18 months. We've reached out. Uh, with clothing and with uh, hygiene items to, uh, to different organizations uh, around the city, Little Rock and North Little Rock. And so we're continuing that uh, even now. So what we're going to do uh, on October, sec October the 2nd at 1030 a.m., uh, we will be having a food, another food giveaway. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all know it's a blessing? Uh, to be blessed and in a position where God can use you to help somebody else. Amen. But on October the 2nd at 10.30 a.m., uh, this particular drive will be sponsored by our mission and our ushers ministry. Uh, we'll be giving away food, amen, on October the 2nd at 10.30 a.m. And uh, we're asking those of you that, are, that come out, we have a whole month to get ready to come out here. Even those of you uh, on Facebook Live, maybe you're not even a member, but you want to participate. Amen. That's a couple of ways you can help us. You can just give food items, non-perishable uh, food items. You can bring them up here on Sunday morning. You can bring them during the week. The church offices are open uh, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 12. Uh, you can bring them up here. Or maybe you just don't want to do neither one of those and you want to uh, just support financially. What you can do, amen, is you can send in a check uh, to the church, 1304 Pine Street, North Little Rock, Arkansas, 72114, and in the memo, put food drive, or I believe on the Givelify app, uh, you can make a donation and put a note in there that says food drive. Is that right? Amen. I believe on there you can put a uh, food drive, or just put other. Amen. Anything we receive uh, as other, uh, hopefully you can put a note on there. Can you put a note on there? Amen. So put a note on there on the Givelify app that says food drive, and that, and whatever you give uh, that's designated for that, we'll use it. Uh, for this October 2nd food drive. Amen. So let's continue to be a blessing because how many of y'all realize there are people still hurting? Amen. And with the hurricane and other things going on, uh, your usual agencies like the Red Cross and agencies like that, they're being stretched. So I believe the body of Christ has to step in and fill in some of those gaps. Amen. So we want to continue to be a blessing. Stand to your feet. Let's prepare our hearts for all the call. Amen. Prepare your hearts for altar call.
Let the church say amen. Truly, it's a blessing just to be in the land of the living. I don't know about you, but I know I serve the mighty God. As the young people said, an awesome God. I've learned that he's more than enough. As we stand all over the building and as we lift our mind towards Calvary, let us give thanks to our God. Heavenly Father, we come now to say thank you. Master, we just want to give thanks to you today. I'm not coming with a big, but all I have is thanksgiving. Thank you, O oh gracious Father, for just last night's rest. And then early, early this morning, Lord, have mercy, allowed our eyes to come open and we were able to view a brand new day. Even though it was cloudy and rainy, it was still fair this morning. And Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank thee, Father, for a King Solomon church family. But even though in our thinking that somebody, someone need a blessing, stop by and bless them this morning like no one else can but you. Father God, we realize that we have many on the sick list. But I know, I know, I know that you're the doctor in a sick room. Somebody's fever may be running a little high. Bring down fever right now. Blood pressure may be up and down. But I know, I know that you're the regulator. Not only are you the blood pressure regulator, but you're the mind regulator. Regulate the mind right now. Regulate the hearts right now. Bring peace to a worried soul. Father God, I just want to give thanks to my family who traveled over the dangerous highway to come and see their elder brother this week. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for them bringing their mother who wanted to come see her son. Bind Satan out from over her. Even though she's in her 90s. But she still have a mind to want to come and see little old me. And I just want to say thank you. Grant them grace. Grant them traveling grace back. And Father God, as we go into the hedges and highways, let us be able to stand firmly and tell a dying world that the wedges of sin is dealt. We come now, Lord Jesus, saying thank you. Then, Master, we realize that as others have already done before, we too must stop this walk of life. <laughs> oh, but just let us be to live the life that you'll be pleased to call us your children. These and other blessings we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
about you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because we really don't know what we would be without you. God, we bless you today. Thank you for this another day. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory. Thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We know where our help come from. All of our help cometh from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know how, good God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. We know, Lord, if it had not been for you on our side. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for those that are here. We thank you for those that are listening. God, we speak health and healing over every single one of them. God, we're going to speak it till they start to believe it. Hallelujah. We speak prosperity over every single one of them. Thank you, Lord. We speak success over each and every one of them, God. Hallelujah. You said we could have what we say. So, God, we say we blessed. We say we healed. We say we prosperous. We say we delivered out the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. We say we the head and not the tail. We say we're above only and not beneath. We say we the lender and not the borrower. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We shall decree a thing. And you said it shall be established unto us. You said we can call those things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. So, God, we speak life over our own selves and over those that are under our ear. The sound of our voice. So, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We pray for this nation as it suffers another tragedy. We pray for those that are affected by floodwaters and the wind. We pray that resources would be available. We pray those that have it right now would give to those that don't have it. Hallelujah. You said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. God, we pray you turn some of that wealth to, towards those that need it. We pray for Afghanistan and the Middle East. We plead the blood of Jesus over that entire region. Hallelujah. They will bend to the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we realize it might not be today. Hallelujah. But I believe a change is going to come. Hallelujah. As we flood the earth with the word of God. Hallelujah. Every nation that keeps the gospel out, we speak like the walls of Jericho. We speak to those walls. And tell them to come down and let Jesus in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for spreading the gospel. Now give us that are here and here to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Don't let us be dull of hearing. Hallelujah. Don't let our ears and our hearts fall asleep because we think we've heard it too many times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prick our hearts to study to show ourselves approved. Hallelujah. Teach us how to chase you, how to desire you, and to delight ourselves in you. Thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you got your Bible, open it up to the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and go down to verse number 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 6. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be in church on Sunday morning? Amen. I know I am. Amen. Whether it's Facebook. We had a great uh, Facebook, I mean not Facebook, Zoom Sunday school class this morning. Amen. Reverend Thomas taught the Zoom class and Mother Wright was in here. And we had a great Sunday school lesson. If you want to be a part of Sunday school, uh, go to the church's website www.kingsolomonnlr.com 
and scroll down till you see the adult Sunday school link. Every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., um, we have a Sunday school class from 9 to 9.45 right there. And if you want to come out, we'll be in here simultaneously uh, in person. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse number 6. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Verse number 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This morning I want to talk to you about why Christians still sin. You may be seated. Why Christians still sin. To sin means to miss the mark. To sin means to come short of what God expects. It means to come short of God's glory. How many of y'all ever sinned before? Put your hand up because you have. Amen. Facebook land, put your hand up too because you have too. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all, A-L-L, that means every single one of us have sinned at some time or another. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. When you sin, you miss the target that God wanted you to hit. Amen. Uh, you come short of what is good and holy and acceptable in the eyesight of God. Unfortunately, over the years, uh, the church has relegated sin to drugs, sex, and rock and roll. But I think it's James lets us know that when you know to do right and don't do right, that's sin right there. Amen. That means if God says stop at the stop sign, but you do a roll and stop, you just sin. Amen. That's the truth. If God say uh, shake the hand and you don't shake the hand, you just sin. If God say go apologize and you don't apologize, you've just sin. So when you know to do right and don't do it, that's sin. And so the Bible lets us know that all of us have come short of the mark. You've come short, I've come short. And it doesn't matter how good you think you've lived your life, you've come short at one time or another. And that's why, listen, that's why every man needs a Savior. Amen. Every man needs a Savior. You, can't, you cannot please God on your own outside of Christ. You need a Savior. And so sin is missing that mark that pleases God. Now, I don't know about you. But I'm tired of sin. And I'm not even talking about y'all. I'm tired of the sin I do. Can I get a witness? And if you sitting out there or out there looking at me, talking about, well, I, we feel sorry for you, Reverend. No, don't feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for yourself because you got issues too. Hmm? Don't, don't, you know, don't feel sorry for me because I'm telling you, I know you doing, you, you sinning somewhere too. Amen. You're not walking perfectly upright. Now, we may not be doing the drug, sex, and rock and roll, but watch this here. I still got some stuff I got to deal with. Amen. And you do too. And so you have to reach a place where you're tired of sin. And so you have to reach a place where, hey, I, it, could be the, it could be the simplest thing, but, you know, there is no big and small sin. Amen. There, there is no, well, this big thing, this, this little thing. No, no. All Sin is sin. And the Bible lets us know if you commit one breach of the law, you've breached the whole law. So the gossiper is, in the eyes of God, the gossiper is no different than the pedophile. Amen. I know that was good news for you. Amen. I know. There, there's no difference between the liar and the murderer. Amen. There's no difference between the fornicator and the one that's got a bad attitude in church and don't want to speak to nobody. You might as well go kill somebody because in God's eyes, it's all the same thing. Let me say it again. Sin is sin, and I, I, I 
I'm tired of sin in, in, in my life, affecting your life, affecting the world, because the Bible lets us know in Romans chapter 5 that death comes through sin. And so if death comes through sin, then sickness comes from death. So when sin is, is involved, now you got death coming, and with death comes sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and all the drama that's going on in this world. It all comes from sin, ladies and gentlemen. And so uh, people always wonder, and, and I know the sinners, the sinners think they slick. What they do, they, they pick on us when we miss the mark. Isn't that right? I thought you was a Christian. Anybody ever had somebody tell you that before? I thought you went to that church over there. I thought you was Mr. and Mrs. Christian. And that's what they do. Amen. Why? Because sinner, um, Christians still sin sometimes. Amen. And unfortunately, sometimes we sin in the eyesight of sinners. And I want to encourage you before I go on, we all got struggles. But listen, believers, do your level best to deal with your issues behind closed doors. Don't put your mess on display for the whole world to see. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. I mean, we know you're struggling. I'm struggling. You're struggling. But keep your bad attitude behind closed doors. Keep your nasty, judgmental, critical, whatever you got. Keep that stuff locked up in a cage until you can get it worked out. Please, please, please. Solomon says that when a righteous man falters, the sinner gets confused. Amen. So, saints still sin sometimes. And so the question is, why do Christians still sin? Well, I'm going to help you with that today. First thing I want you to do is get rid of this language right here. You know, we all sinners saved by grace. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. Look at somebody. Let's let's pause. Look at somebody. I ain't got a long way to go. Look at somebody. Please say, I ain't no sinner. Facebook, look at somebody in your living room. If you're home by yourself, tell your own self, I ain't no sinner. Now, I might not be doing everything I'm supposed to do, but I'm still not a sinner, doggone it. We are not sinners saved by grace. When you come into Christ, you're no longer a sinner. You are a saint and a child of Almighty God. And you might be sitting here today, don't feel like that. Maybe you was out at the club last night. I mean, you smoking some good weed. That's an oxymoron, good weed. That's what we used to say. Okay, you smoking weed. Ain't no good weed. I had to catch it myself. <laughs> Amen. We called it good weed back in the day. But it's not good weed. All weed is bad. Retract that statement. All weed is bad. You might have messed up last night or yesterday, but if you're a believer, a real believer in Jesus Christ, you're still a saint. Come on. Your actions do not move you out of the realm of God's righteousness. No more than your good actions move you into the realm of God. good God Almighty. Can't no bad put you out. Can't no good put you in. Let me say that one more time. Can't no bad by you put you out in the center. I'm telling you something, Mr. and Mrs. Center. Ain't no good you doing going to put you in. God is not impressed by our actions or inaction. Hmm? So get rid of the language that says, uh, we're just sinners saved by grace. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, that means look and see. All things have become new. And if you've been born again, you are a brand new self in Jesus Christ. The old you've been done away with, you brand new. Somebody said you're a species that never existed before. Amen. Say this with me. I'm brand new in Christ Jesus. Say it again. I'm brand new in Christ Jesus. Say it with me. I might have issues, but I'm still brand new. I might be going through, but I'm still brand new. I might have messed up. Come on. But I'm still holy. I might have crossed the line. Come on. 
but I'm still righteous. Hallelujah. How can I say that? I can say that because my holiness is not of myself. My holiness is of God. I can say that because my righteousness is not of myself. My righteousness is of God. Romans 3.26 says that God is just and he is the justifier of those who come to him through Christ Jesus. My holiness, good God Almighty, my holiness is a work of God, not of myself. My righteousness is a work of the Holy Spirit, not of myself. Hallelujah. I'm sanctified not because of me. I'm sanctified because of him being in me. Hallelujah. So, we are not sinners saved by grace. We are saints. And listen, to say anything less than that you are a saint is an insult to the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm finna cook your goose right here. Don't you ever catch yourself calling yourself a sinner saved by grace again. Because when you say that, what you're saying is the blood of Jesus didn't get the job done. When you say that, you're saying that the blood of Jesus was not good enough to clean me up. You better watch yourself. Yes, Talking about you a sinner saved by grace. No, when the, blood of, when the blood of Jesus hits your life, it washes out everything that was ever wrong with you, everything that's wrong with you right now, and everything that you'll ever be get yourself caught up in. One scripture says you... Make the blood of Jesus Christ a common thing. Come on. It's the blood of our Savior that he bled and, and shed on Calvary's cross. And it's innocent. It's pure. It's holy. And when you come into Christ, it washes you. The epistle of John lets us know that the, that, the, that the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ is like a washing machine that never cuts off. When you come into Christ, the Lord places you in the washing machine of Jesus' blood and you are continuously being washed and purged from everything that's wrong with you. Somebody needs to hear that today. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear that because you're living in guilt and condemnation today. I'm telling you, in Christ Jesus, you live in your life in a washing machine and it's not putting out water, it's putting out the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm clean right now. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm holy right now. Hallelujah. Y'all hold. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm right in God's eyes right now. And how can you say that? How you got the nerve to say that? I know what you did last summer. No, I'm right because of the blood of Jesus. Don't you let sinners talk you into being like them. Because I'm, I'm at the age, I don't care no more. I tell them, you're just going to hell. I'm going to heaven just like I am. Don't you worry about me. Because God's going to take care of this right here. Hallelujah. Now, how do you know that? Because he told me so. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. So he's not evaluating me on my mistakes. He's evaluating me on the blood of Jesus Christ. I think we need to quit doing these tests on people in church. Well, you know, Reverend so-and-so, Sister so-and-so, this, that, and the other thing. And, and so I think, who asked you what you think? I mean, you always got to do an assessment on another Christian. You always got to do an evaluation on another Christian. Don't tell me what Reverend Leek's got going on. I don't have no time to worry about what Reverend Leek's got going on. I'm too busy sweeping around my own front door. God didn't call you to do assessment. God called you to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you love your own self and you don't want nobody talking about you, then leave those, these folks alone, please. You're a Christian evaluator. Man, sit your raggedy self down. The Bible says judge your own self. Hallelujah. And you're getting ready to take communion. And the Bible already warned us when you take communion and you haven't properly discerned the body of Christ. Who's the body of Christ? We the body of Christ. When you take communion and you're talking about your brothers and sisters in the Lord, you are drinking death to your own self. The Bible promises you that. 
Don't you take that communion thinking about what I've done wrong, what they've done wrong, what he and she done wrong. You take communion thanking God that the blood of Jesus has delivered me. So Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verse number 6, he says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Christ. Amen. How many of y'all remember when you used to be a sinner? You were something else, weren't you? Paul says your old man was crucified with him. That means he dead, he gone. Watch this. That the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Verse number 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He's telling you. That when you come to Christ, your old man was crucified with Christ on the cross. And with that, he's telling you, listen to the language he uses. You've been freed from sin. That, that, that means this here. If you was in Tucker, the penitentiary, and they get a key and open the door and say, get out of here, that means you've been set free. That means, watch this here, that means that the penitentiary system no longer has control over me because I've been freed from the penal system. Hmm? And Jesus is telling you that when you come into Christ, you've been set free from sin. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Sin has no dominion over you. Sin has no right to control you. Sin has no right to dictate your life. Now you sitting there like, for real? For real. Jesus has set you free from sin. Now let's 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 shout one quick minute, real quick, before I finish this. So since I've been set free from, how many of y'all been set free from sin? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Out there in Facebook land, raise your hand if you've been set free from sin. If you've been set free from sin, watch this here. What you feeling guilty for? If I've been set free from sin, I'm not going to waste my life feeling guilty no more. I'm not going to waste my life feeling condemned no more. I'm not going to waste my life feeling judged no more. Why? Because I've been set free from sin and it no longer controls me. Why? Because with, with sin comes guilt, fear, and condemnation. It's automatic. It's automatic with the system. With, with, with sin comes guilt, fear, and condemnation, then eventually death. Amen. And I'm telling you, Jesus said, you've been freed from sin. Let's keep going. Verse number 8. Now, if we died with Christ. How many of y'all died with Christ? If, you, if you're a believer, put your hand up. You, you died with Christ. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. What is he telling you? He's telling you when I came to Christ and Jesus died, I died with him. And since he's alive, I might have died one time, but I ain't going to die no more. Come on. Because sure as he's alive, I'm alive also. Amen. Matter of fact, Colossians, Paul says in Colossians that I, I, I died and my life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is my life, appears in glory at the rapture, then I'll show up with him. Watch this here. I'm going to come back. If I die before he comes, I'm going to come back with him. Hallelujah. And all of the saints that pass with, with me, we're going to come back with him. We're going to pick up our brand new bodies. Hallelujah. And all of the believers that are alive on planet earth, they're going to be caught up together with us. And we're going to celebrate with the Lord in the air for seven years. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know you ain't, if you're in Christ, you ain't got to die no more. Hallelujah. Look at somebody tell them, I died one time and I ain't going to die no more. Hallelujah. When I died in Christ, that's all the dying I got. I ain't got to die no more. Somebody, I can already hear a hypocrite out there on Facebook talking about, well, you're going to get in that grave one day. No, no, this, 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 this frame going to get in the grave. Hallelujah. This body going to get in the grave. This, this earth suit going to get in the grave. But the Bible lets me know to be absent from this thing is to be present with the Lord. So my body will never, my life will never see a cemetery. Hallelujah, because I done died one time, Rev, and I ain't going to die no more. Verse number nine, listen, knowing that Christ, somebody say Christ, 
Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Since he ain't going to die no more, I ain't going to die no more. And death no longer has dominion over him. So watch this here. What he's doing, he's putting us in Christ. He's made that very clear. And he's telling him, telling us that death no longer has dominion over Christ. So since I'm in Christ, death has no dominion over me. So since death has no dominion over me, fear has no dominion over me, guilt has no dominion over me, uh, condemnation has no dominion over me. Watch this. Let me help somebody out. Sickness and disease have no dominion over me. Poverty and lack has no more dominion over me. Entrapment, entang whatever you want to come up with in Christ Jesus, it no longer has dominion over you. Can I help somebody out real quick? Quit being scared to get on an airplane. Quit being scared to go on a cruise. Huh? Quit being scared to go visit your mother-in-law. Come on, somebody. She ain't poisoned a turkey. You'll be all right. I know Thanksgiving coming up. Somebody a little nervous. Your mother-in-law might want to poison you because you married her favorite son. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Jesus took care of that too. In Mark 16, he said, if I eat any drink, eat or drink any deadly thing, the Lord going to take care of me. So don't worry about your mother-in-law. Hallelujah, you've been freed, and, and none of that stuff has dominion over you no more. It no longer has control over you. There, there, there is no boogeyman, hallelujah. And if you ever run into the boogeyman, just say in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And I promise you the boogeyman will leave you alone, come on. Quit being scared to send your kids to school. I know they're fighting all over town, come on. You plead the blood of Jesus over them and send them to school in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teach them good values. Teach them, teach them, they, give them a loving home to come home to. Hallelujah. Love on them at home. They won't go to school looking for love. Come on. Hallelujah. Feed them a good meal and send them to school. Pray with them. Read the word with them and send them to the schoolhouse. Hallelujah. And watch this here. What I can't do on my own, the Lord sure enough will take care of his part. I ain't going to send my kids to Central because they fighting up there. They fighting everywhere. Hallelujah. And the ones they not fighting, that, doggone it, they racist. Hallelujah. You sneaking your kids in private school, thinking everybody out there love them. You better wake yourself up. There's more racists running around these private schools than you can shake a stick at. And they want your baby so they can get that money. Hallelujah. <laughs> I better leave that alone. I'm going to let you live in your little deceived life. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that wasn't even part of my sermon. Hallelujah. But thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's time for some of these raggedy covers to be pulled back on some folks. Come on. You send them to private school, think you're getting away from something. You ain't getting away from nothing. It's just a different demon they got to deal with. I'm not saying don't send them. If you can do it, pay for it, go send them. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying don't think you're getting away from something just because you're going out there or over there or whatever the case may be. Because I'm telling them they got some issues too. So in 10, he says, for the death that he died, he died to sin. One, verse 10, he died to sin once for all. That all means everybody. When Jesus died for sin, he paid the price for everybody. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now, verse 11, that's where I want to go. I'm almost done. Verse number 11, he says, likewise. So I say likewise. Now, what he's doing, he's drawing you this perfect picture of Christ being crucified, raised from the dead, having dominion over sin, death, and all. He's drawn you, he's drawn you a perfect picture of Christ's victory. A perfect victory. I'm telling you, listen, the devil ain't got nothing on Jesus. Matter of fact, Paul wrote in Corinthians, I love Paul. Paul was a man who saw Christ uh, it alive, unlike the other apostles. Paul saw him alive after his resurrection. So after his, uh, yeah, after his resurrection. So Paul had a unique experience. He's, he says, I was caught up to the third heaven. He said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, caught up to the third heaven. He said, I didn't know if I was in the body or out of the body. Paul was actually, I think, raptured a little bit. Or he was at least transfigured. And he was able to communicate with Jesus on a whole nother level in the third heaven. So he's telling us 
uh, in verse 11, likewise, you also, listen, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The question is, why Christians still sin? Here, here's the answer. The Christians still sin because they haven't reckoned themselves to be dead to sin and alive to God. You sinning because you haven't done the math and put all the numbers together and reckoned yourself to be dead to sin the same way Christ is dead to sin. You still think you're a sinner. You still think it has control over you. You still, you still say, I got the can't help it. You still struggling and a strain. And who that? Lee Wheelman and Hughes, whoever that is. You still struggling and strain like Harvey and the Kansas Spiritual Singers. Hey, man, come on. And you don't know. You haven't. You haven't. Because to reckon means to do the math. To do the math. To do the math and come to a conclusion in an, in an algebraic formula, come to a conclusion and realize that, hey, it's not over Jesus, therefore it's not over me. And I am free from sin controlling my life. And when I don't know that, the only thing left for me to do is keep on sinning like I'm used to doing. If you take somebody out to the club and you don't teach them about new life in Christ, they'll go back to the club. Hmm? If you take somebody from fornicating and you don't teach them about getting married and having a wife and all them doing things the right way, they're going to go back to fornicating. This is what I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. It says in the King James Version, awake to righteousness and sin not. I'm just adding some more on top of this. See, we sin, we sin because we're more awoke to sin than we are to righteousness. We, we, we pay more attention to sin than we do God's righteousness. We pay more attention. We see the glass half empty instead of half full. We pay more t attention to CNN, MSNBC, and Fox than we do the Word of God. Come on. We're awake to everything that's wrong with us, but we're asleep to everything that's right with us. We pay more attention to what the sinner's saying to us instead of what Caradine's trying to tell you. Come on, somebody. And Paul said you are to be awake to God's righteousness about you and not the sin. Because when I wake up to righteousness, I ain't going to want to sin no more. Watch this. This is, why, this is why I've been saying over the last few years, we got to stop preaching sin in the church. The more you tell folks about what they're doing wrong, they're going to keep on doing wrong. I mean, I could get up here, stop fornicating, stop lying, stop gossiping, stop doing this, stop doing that. And the more I keep telling you that, y'all going to keep on doing it. And you will say, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. And if you're not doing that, you're going to be doing something else. Because, how is it? because faith is a law. It works every time for those that get involved with it. Faith is a law. It is an unchangeable law just like gravity. Here's the law of faith. Listen, faith cometh by hearing. What you hear, you will do. I don't believe that. Yes, you will. If you hear it long enough, you're going to do it. So that's why we don't sit up here and preach sin and keep telling you everything you're doing wrong. Instead of getting up telling you, well, y'all need to stop fornicating. Y'all need to stop lying. Y'all need to stop. I don't waste my time doing that. I'd rather spend my time telling you, you know, you sure are blessed. I mean, you got it going on. You holy. You righteous. You're prosperous. And sometimes I tell folks that around here, and they look at me like, you talking about me? Yeah, I'm talking about you. I, I can just look at you and tell you living right before God. Come on. I can tell you doing good in life. I can tell you you doing great things. That's what y'all do to your kids. Instead of putting your kids down, why don't you put your kids up? Come on. We are to speak life to one another, not death. If I keep speaking life to you, you'll put faith in life and not faith in death. If I keep telling you you're blessed, you're going you're gonna to begin to believe that you're blessed even while you're doing wrong. If I keep telling you that you are prosperous and that you are the lender and not the borrower, that the wealth of God is laid up for you, if I keep telling you that, eventually you're going to believe it even while your bank account is in the red. If I keep telling you you're healed while you're sick, eventually you'll believe it. Don't come to me, tell me, tell me uh, I'm sick. I'm, no, I, yeah, I, I see what's going on, but I don't believe that. We don't preach sickness and disease. 
We preach health and healing. We preach long life. Matter of fact, we preach, don't, we don't just preach long life, we preach good life. Hallelujah. Not life sitting up in a house smoking on cigarettes miserable. No, we don't preach that. We preach life, happy life, going to Disney World, going to Six Flags, going to Grand, wherever you want to do and go, that's what we preach and teach. Hallelujah. Waste my life telling y'all everything that's wrong with y'all. That ain't going to do no good. And that's why Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 21, he says, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So you're trying to overcome sin with sin. What is that going to, how are you going to do that? You don't overcome sin with sin. No, you overcome sin with righteousness. Hmm? You overcome evil with good. You overcome what's broken, not talking about the broken, but talking about the fixed. Hmm? Do you understand that? So, why do Christians still sin? Christians still sin. Here's the simple, fast, final answer. Because their mind hasn't been renewed to who they are. I promise you, any struggle you're having with sin, it's because your mind hasn't been renewed to who you are. That's why we shouldn't judge one another. Because when you see believers sinning, the only thing, they just have an unrenewed mind. And they haven't been fully persuaded, according to Romans chapter 4, they haven't been fully persuaded of who they are in Christ. And I know some of y'all got some issues. I know you do. You're struggling with that stuff. And I'm telling you, don't let those issues define you. I'm defined by one thing, and that's Christ Jesus and him crucified. And watch this here. If you ever put your mouth on me outside of those terms, you have my sympathy. Hmm? Because I'm not going to be putting my mouth on y'all. Now, I'm going to laugh at you sometimes because some of y'all funny. And you do some weird stuff. I just be like, man, look at him. I be like, Lord Jesus, look what he's he trying to do. Look what she's trying to do. Look at that. I just pray, say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I see you in Christ Jesus and him crucified. And I know that any issue you have is because you haven't convinced yourself that you, watch it, that you deserve better. Hallelujah. We've overcome sin in Christ Jesus. You've been set free. Quit being guilty. Quit being condemned. Here's the tragedy. It's hard for God to use a condemned church. Some of the healings that are not manifesting around this place because you're living in guilt. And the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So guilt, condemnation, those things, they stifle the grace of God. Because you can't, watch this here, you can't pray and worry at the same time. You've been saying that all your life. You can't do it both. You're either going to believe God or are you not. And if you're guilty and condemned because of what you're doing, you ain't believing God for nothing. So I'm, this, I'm getting ready to go. I'm telling you, I'm charging you, I'm admonishing you, quit being guilty. Your guilt and condemnation was placed on Jesus at Calvary. Your fear was placed on Jesus at Calvary. And I know it's always, but what about people say, quit worrying about the sin. Get rid of the guilt and the fear and the condemnation and teach people about the risen Savior and that garbage will take care of itself. Stand on your feet. I got good news. I got good news and bad news. Which one you want first? Bad news first. If you don't know Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. And I know we got these new age preachers out here. Ain't no such thing as hell. Hell is an anomaly. It's, a, it's an allegory. Whatever. 
You're going to die and go to hell. Because what you're doing, you believe in half the Bible. You believe in the heaven, the good part, but you don't believe in the bad part. The same one to put the good part, the same one to put the bad part. Amen. If you don't know Christ, you're going to be forever separated from God. Amen. That's, that's it. That's bad news. You know somebody that's died during the pandemic and they didn't know Christ? <sighs> they in hell. Like the rich man in Luke 16. Lifting up their eyes in hell. Repent. But it ain't going to work. If you don't know Christ, that's what's going to happen. Now you want the good news? Here's the good news. 1 John chapter 2 lets us know, see, Christ is the propitiation for our sin. That, that, that word propitiation, I feel, I feel smart. <clears throat> that word propitiation, because y'all know I'm an uneducated preacher. Somebody's like, oh, we know, we heard all them angst. That's all right. God didn't send me here because of my education. God sent me here because of him in me. That's it. See, don't, don't get a preacher just because of education. Come on. And put on the application, I need a pa pass with a, a master's degree, a Ph.D., and all this kind of stuff. And then you come in and you wonder why ain't nothing working. Because, okay, anyway. Get a, get a pastor that God sent to you. So anyway, here's the good news. He's the propitiation for our sins. In that verse, it says, listen to what it says. It says, not only ours, but the sins of the whole world. He puts the sinner and saint together under the blood of Jesus. That means that everybody's sins have been paid for. The blood of the sinner. The, the dumbest thing to do is die and go to hell. I'm telling you, if you buy me a house out in Chenal Valley, I'm going to take it. I ain't going to be like, well, well how, how'd you find this? And how'd, no, give me the keys. I'm taking it. Your sins have been paid for. So, why people die and go to hell? They die and go to hell because they won't just simply receive the gift. Only difference between a sinner and a saint is the saint made up his mind. I'm going to receive what Jesus did for me. That's it. No conversation about who bad, who ain't bad, who doing what. No. I receive and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here or if you're out there, and you want to accept Christ, if you're here, come down here and shake my hand. You want to join this church, we're going to get you indoctrinated into this church. If you're out there, amen. Listen, pray this prayer with me. Amen. Lord Jesus, amen. Come down here and shake my hand. These folks coming down. Y'all wait one minute out there. Amen. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. God bless you all. Amen. This young lady is going to take care of you all. Let me, I got to talk to these folks out here, okay? Now go with her. She's going to take care of you. If you're out there and you don't know Christ, listen. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Let me say this here. I'm going to go. It's not a formula. It is a realization that I need a Savior from my heart. It's a realization that I'm carrying the weight of my sin, and I can't carry it. I need a Savior. And from that realization, I believe that God sent Jesus to die, and I accept that by faith from the heart. If you'll do that and declare with your mouth, yes, Jesus is Lord over my life, a miracle will happen on the inside of you. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians chapter 12 that the Holy Spirit will come in, and he will back ties you into the body of Christ. Amen. It, it happens. You don't need no emotions. You don't need no lightning. You don't need no rain. It just happens. And you'll be a brand new you. You'll have something on the inside of you. We're going back to the verse talking about you're free from sin. You'll have something on the inside of you that, that don't want to sin no more. I know it works. I did it for myself. I had, these folks in here did it. Some of y'all did it. Just make that declaration. If you do that, send us a message, and we'll get back to you. We'll have somebody pray you, pray for you, and reach out to you, and we'll get you going in the kingdom of God. We got to let y'all go. Listen, y'all go and walk by faith and not by sight. And God bless y'all this day and always. Amen.